Hi, everyone. Welcome to our channel, Veer. Douglas McGregor expresses deep concern over the lack of professionalism among German senior military officers, suggesting that they have been influenced by American military culture over the years. He criticizes their vague language regarding military operations, arguing that it's foolish to avoid acknowledging involvement in conflicts when providing substantial military support. McGregor emphasizes the importance of transparency and honesty in communication between senior officers and the government, particularly in matters of international conflict. He believes the first point of concern is the presence of numerous technicians, predominantly British or American, in civilian attire on the ground in Ukraine. He expresses surprise at the possibility of German involvement, but notes the German Chancellor's indication of their withdrawal, if present. He is certain that missile provisions to Ukraine won't occur due to political concerns in Germany. He suggests the Chancellor is reacting to public aversion to involvement in the conflict. He anticipates tighter government control on information but doubts the efficiency given perceived disorganization in Berlin and Washington. He speculates on clandestine activities involving intelligence agencies and special forces, suggesting similar chaotic developments in Germany due to opportunistic exploitation of the Ukraine-Russia conflict. He suspects the Chancellor is striving to regain control but doubts his awareness of the situation's full extent. He believes Macron is merely copying the United States' practice of deploying special operations forces without proper consultation or transparency, a pattern observed since the 1960s. He suggests Macron seeks to portray himself as a significant global figure, but perceives France as increasingly irrelevant in world affairs. He asserts that Britain also lacks significance due to insufficient military and economic strength. He notes Germany's potential significance, yet highlights their limited military capability, particularly after reductions in special operations forces under Merkel's leadership. Overall, he doubts Germany's military prowess. He acknowledges the actions being taken, expressing grave concern over their foolishness and extreme danger. He emphasizes the weakness of their position, both militarily and economically, stressing the fragility of their stance. He warns against bluffing, particularly when dealing with a formidable power like Russia, whose capabilities are substantial. He reflects on the consequences of the war in Ukraine, which has contributed to the growth of Russian military power. Russia. He fears potential misinterpretation of intentions by Russia due to the provision of powerful cruise missiles. He criticizes the current approach of bluffing, advocating instead for a diplomatic exit from the situation, entrusting European powers to engage with Moscow. However, he laments the Americanization of European thinking, suggesting it undermines their ability to handle the situation effectively. He believes that the initial intention behind certain actions was to assert power, but realizes that this strategy has backfired disastrously, resulting in a significantly more perilous situation. He points to Scholz's recent statements as evidence of heightened concern and perceived risk. The direct warnings from Russia to Germany underscore the seriousness of the situation. He suggests that while Scholz may be fearful, others like Macron and Sunak seem disconnected from reality, clinging to the belief in unlimited American support regardless of their actions. He compares this mentality to that of Yahoo, who similarly relies on assumed American backing. He emphasizes the lack of capability, strength, and power to support such assumptions, highlighting the dangerous nature of the current circumstances. He asserts that the present moment is more precarious than any other in the preceding two and a half years. Yes, indeed. And I'm not the sole voice expressing these concerns. Others, like Scott Ritter, have also raised similar points. The current situation is dire, and our vulnerabilities are starkly evident. The chief of staff of the army feels compelled to offer public guidance to the political leadership in Washington, signaling our precarious state. Unable to effectively bolster recruitment for his own army, he recognizes its inadequacies in terms of morale, discipline, organization, and training, making it ill-prepared to confront the Russians. While he refrains from public admission, his message urges against underestimating the growing strength of the Russians, arguably at their peak since the 1980s. The prudent course of action at this juncture would be a complete withdrawal from Ukraine. Failure to do so risks entanglement and substantial losses from which recovery would be challenging. Despite Putin's notable restraint, it's evident that he's well informed about our activities in Ukraine and has consciously avoided actions that could escalate tensions. However, with each passing day, it becomes increasingly apparent that he may feel compelled to act, given our apparent disregard for his concerns. If Russia feels it necessary to act to grab our attention, they will. Reports suggest Moscow's general staff is considering expanding the Russian military by an additional 800,000 personnel, indicating they have no shortage of manpower. 
The potential need to extend operations to the Polish border reflects Russia's perceived need to secure its borders against perceived threats emanating from western Ukraine. This sentiment arises from concerns about Ukraine serving as a launching pad for attacks against Russia, prompting a potential military response to ensure security in the region. Despite Russian reluctance, actions like American military presence near the Arctic Circle provoke responses. While Russia prefers to avoid such confrontations, it feels compelled to react when its interests are threatened. This aspect is crucial for European leaders to comprehend, although it appears that Scholz is beginning to grasp this reality. The prevailing neocon narrative portrays a scenario akin to 1938, depicting Putin as an aggressor set on territorial expansion. However, the truth is that Western have often provoked Russian responses, as seen in the case of eastern Ukraine. The push for further escalation by certain individuals only exacerbates tensions unnecessarily. But speaking candidly about the situation is challenging due to prevalent misconceptions perpetuated among the American and European populations. Nonetheless, it's imperative to acknowledge the stark reality Russia is formidable while our position is weak. The recent statement from the Army Chief of Staff, although not explicitly stating our weaknesses, indirectly conveys this message by highlighting Russia's strength without addressing our vulnerabilities. Indeed, we must acknowledge the truth when it's spoken, and Scholz's recent statements reflect this urgency. He's essentially warning against escalating the situation, emphasizing the potential consequences of deploying troops or launching strikes deep into Russian territory. The gravity of his message underscores the seriousness of the situation. It's not a game or a mere facade. We must confront the reality that Russia is prepared while we are not. They possess the depth and capability to respond effectively, whereas we lack such readiness. The prudent approach, therefore, entails seeking a diplomatic resolution to the conflict. This would involve negotiating new territorial arrangements and ensuring the neutrality of Ukraine, while abandoning any aspirations of NATO membership for the country. European leaders are keenly aware of these realities behind closed doors, even if they remain reticent publicly. Their concerns highlight the gravity of the situation and the imperative for diplomatic resolution. The conflict might potentially extend into the summer months. However, the unfortunate reality is that much of the financial aid destined for Ukraine is likely to be misappropriated. Concerns have been raised by members of Congress who have directly engaged with Ukrainian officials, warning against the rampant corruption that undermines support. Billions of dollars are anticipated to vanish due to this corruption, despite our efforts to sustain what remains of the Ukrainian military and government structures. The facade of assistance needs to be dismantled, and the truth acknowledged we have effectively lost this war and contributed to the destruction of Ukraine. The reluctance to confront this reality perpetuates the suffering of millions and hinders any chance of recovery for the region. European leaders, fearful of damaging their ties with Washington, remain hesitant to speak out. Yet embracing the truth could alleviate the situation. While there are doubts about the willingness of politicians like Mike Johnson to confront this truth, doing so could lead to a more honest reckoning. Regarding military aid, it will likely encompass various forms of support, including the purchase and shipment of artillery ammunition from countries like South Korea. However, it's essential for policymakers like Mike Turner and Mike Johnson to grasp the potential consequences of their actions. Insisting on further involvement could lead to direct confrontation with Russian forces on the ground, a prospect that demands careful consideration.